the best thing you can do is pretty much ignore the hype about the market. This is our number one piece of advice for you tonight, as listening to market hype at any time is not and never will be a good strategy. In fact, you're better off to turn off the majority of the information sources you currently use. Now, the way to sustain results in the stock market is not about gaining more information. It is and always will be about being more knowledgeable and being a better skilled or more skilled as a trader and investor so that you're independent of all of that noise. So if you have investments in the stock market, it's vital that you need to learn to identify what is real, what is not, and when corrections are more likely to occur. So tonight we're just gonna assist you in understanding this as we analyze movements in both the Dow Jones Index and the S&P 500, as well as onto our own market. Now there is one thing, there is the thinking that we always follow the US markets. Now whilst we know at, that at times when the US market falls, our market falls, but this doesn't always occur at, at that exactly the same time across both markets and the severity is not always the same. So to assist you, we're gonna take a look at how the US stock market has unfolded in past corrections and relate this to the moves on the Australian market at the same time. Now, in recent weeks, the US markets have exhibited signs that the spectacular bull run may be ending with many experts predicting the US stock market will crash very soon. I remember 87, I remember mm -hmm. GFC, and then obviously COVID. Now, COVID was an event-driven crash, which means an event happened, the market crashed. It's really rare yep. to have an event-driven crash. 87, 2007 or GFC were both economic crashes. So the economy of things happened. In Before the GFC, was there a lot of talk about the market crashing? Okay. Before 87, there wasn't talk about the market crashing. So when somebody, when everybody's talking about the market crashing, that means the market can't crash. But simply because, and, and the reason why, it just really makes sense. And this is one of those aha moments. You go, if everybody's talking about a crash, then all the big end of town who trade the most amount of money on the market, the dollar wise, they already know about this long before you do, and they're already adjusting their portfolio. So if they're already adjusting their portfolios, how is the market going to crash? And that's the logic behind it. If everybody's talking about it, it just basically can't happen. And so whilst we will, Janine and I are expecting a pullback, and we'll talk about it on the charts in a second, we're not expecting a big crash at all right now because there's too much talk about it. They're the ones that, are, if they're coming down, they'll bring the market with them. And they're the ones you need to watch in that'll lead you to a crash possibly happening. Because I know in 87, you, got, you had your News Corps and those sorts of big stocks were moving down. Um, in, in the GFC, you had all of the big stocks. Some of those stocks were all coming down. What's happening on the market before a crash? We've got rampant speculation, mass, mass euphoria right across the board. We've got massive levels of borrowing, people using margin loans and borrowing, using their houses and everything else. We've got masses of money going in the marketplace. And what causes the market to crash is that all the money that is ever going to get into the market's already there and no more can go in because everybody's borrowed as much as what they can possibly borrow. And so therefore the only way is to go down. And then as it starts to go down, people start triggering things and start selling and then it starts the snowball going and then you get the big snowball and we get the big bang. But the opposite happens at the other end. So the big stocks start falling first, so we get out of those, they're the signposts, but the opposite happens at the bottom when the big, big stocks are signaling the end of the bottom because they've already hit the bottom and they start to move us up out of the crash. And we're not seeing that either. So are we seeing masses of borrowing at this point in time on our market? No, we're not really seeing masses of borrowing on our market. We're seeing more borrowing, but not you know, record levels at the moment. I've not seen any signs of that. 8 to 12 mm -hmm. on our market, maybe 15% on the US market. Roughly, we're expecting that any time soon, but not a crash.